certificate from 1942. These things have been in the garage. Um, I was quite horrified to find these things in the garage. These, these are documents that we would never, these, these are like a blessing. Like, like, they're like the lotto for us. When we find these documents, we don't find these documents anywhere else. Um, and they're really, really valuable. Now, not just to you as a family, but to historians who are looking back on this period. Um, they tell us a lot about his life, so as well as the oral histories and as well as the other um, material that we've got. So you can tell you a lot. Um, he was the best skater in fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> so there are things that you just wouldn't have imagined that he would never, you know, he wouldn't tell you this, but it's here. You know, great basketball player, um, came first in almost everything. <laughs> I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one. I didn't know there was a skating fancy dress event. And there's actually, there are, there, are, there are hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents. Like I was emailing my son some just so we could actually put these onto this. I emailed him 17 in a span of what? A couple of hours. But we can't, even, well, there's hundreds of pages. There's a lot of this stuff that you wouldn't have seen before. And there's a lot of it. So we've only included a snapshot of it. Is that can you go to the next one off? Um, just, oh, this, this is classic. This is what Dr. Ashton looked like when he came to Australia. This is from 1970. We often see pictures of him with his old man, but he's sort of a younger. This, this, this picture would have been taken at the absolute height of, of um, a lot of pain that he was going through. Um, and during interviews, you know, he discussed, I'm probably about to sitting right in front of me, but he discussed a lot of things that were quite painful to him. And I think they were things that he'd never discussed before. Mm. A couple of you touched on them during your interviews. When you actually see the oral material, I'm getting this past, it is a, it's, it's nothing that you can describe, and it's nothing you can imagine unless you actually go through when you read it. And he kept all, I don't know how, I don't know why, but he did. I'm glad he did. So can you go through? I'll show you a snippets of it. There was folds and folds in that too. Before we get to the, to the sad news, this is some of the other good stuff. So when he was appointed, can you see some of that? Maybe some? That one? Yep. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you can zoom into that one. These are really good. There's only quite a bit about his character. There's a lot of character reference letters. Up, up, go Yep. In turn, since the junior discipline, discipline comes out in almost everything that Dr. Ashcroft comes out. Very, very disciplined. Refined manners. Um, ex exercise, when we had an interview with Dr. Um, with, sorry, Mr. Mohammed Kazim Hussein, he said to me, he said to us, uh, Dr. Ashok Adam was different before. He used to play cricket. He was really active in sport. Yeah, yeah. And you don't see that when you're doing necessarily interviews or when you're looking at, you know, dry newspapers. Um, so that comes out on the oral histories. It's obviously uh, confirmed all this sort of stuff as well. So can we go to the next one? So he was a cricketer, football, hockey, all-rounder. And we want to capture this sort of information in the biography. This is, this we don't want to just have a dry biography, yeah. but represent, as Katie's yeah. saying, the dynamic character that he is. Because, and that in and of itself is a history, there's a legacy there, I think, you know. That's very nice. There are folds and folds and folds, more folds than you can imagine. And we've scanned a lot, most of them. Um, we didn't do all of them because it was just, it was just too much. Um, summaries and summaries of various theories, various philosophers, various movements, um, basically everything and anything. You know, from Scientology, from Socialism, Mark to Scientology, he's, he's covered it all. And he's handwritten it. There's textbooks on Scientology in his library, which we found fascinating. But he's got summaries and summaries and summaries of um, all these different philosophies. I don't know what's inside Michelle on that brain, but he's just done it all. And it's handwritten. So it obviously, when you handwrite something like that, it actually means a lot to you. As you have to photocopy your scanning as we do now, and you scan, you don't read, or you skim read. This is handwritten. The one next to it, Zach? Some of them might have 
you know, personal things. I do think it's appropriate to scan some of these letters and share them here. But there are a lot of letters, and they do tell you a lot about things. Um, and people's relationships with him. And people who supported him too throughout his sort of really dark period as well. The one that gets me the most and the one that will stick with me for life is this one. Yeah. It makes me really emotional and upset. Apart from the fact that he was dismissed, they actually wrote a list of all the stuff they took back off him. He used to be exact. This was in Kashmir when he was dismissed. He was supposed to ask for these things back. Oh, okay. So they took his job, they took his livelihood, they took, you know, reputation is important as well. They also took a pink cushion and a paperweight. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm really, really upset to me when I read that. I think it's been listed. It's been listed and I think there's another they've actually ticked it off to make sure they actually got these things back. Um, this is the sort of thing that you would have to go through. You know, after after having such a prestigious, prestigious position, after, you know, and, and he sacrificed a lot too. So while he was doing all this, you know, while he was studying, while he was teaching, he was doing a lot of community work. And to have all of that taken and to suffer through this is, is quite, um, quite emotional and quite psychologically um, impactful as well. There's the other list. Of, and you can see it signed there of things that he would have to return from certain people. And they all signed. Go up that. Go up a little bit. And he's uh, kept all of this. He's so kept obviously, all this. he's kept must have had a big effect. Um, a list from all the academics that he was owed any books or things to. They all had to sign as well. It wasn't, you know, bad enough. that he lost his job and to do this all this as well. And any any people, just people. So can you go to the other one? Um, these are various letters. You go the blue ones out. I think the blue one is actually the letter of termination. They seem to have sent more than one because they really wanted to rub it in. Like there was more than one. Um, and there's a couple of them. Um, there's a couple of them. There's a couple of them. There's a couple of them. from that event, he expressed it to Katie and I, which we were so very grateful for. So it's a very important part of his history, and his, 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 that's come about in the old... And I think it's been Africa. critical to his life story generally. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a, it's a turning point. I think it's psychologically it's had a great impact. Um, I think it's, it's, it's been at the back of his mind while he's done a lot of his community work as well. And it, and it comes out when you talk to him. Um, if you have a look at some of these letters, I think one of them was the one to the Prime Minister, the way in the middle. She wrote to the Prime Minister. I think it was Indira Gandhi, which was the Prime Minister. She wrote to the Prime Minister in 1970. That was saying that he might go to Australia. And it's actually a three page letter. I only scanned one page. We've got, we've got it you know, on our drive. But it's, it was a three page letter talk, basically summarising his life up to that point um, and why it was an unfair dismissal. If you go that drunk, one's that. And this is not. Yes. With a lot of his letters, with a lot of his with, with a lot of his work generally, and I scanned that one so you can have a look at it. Um, he, when he wrote a letter, he wrote drafts and drafts and drafts of a letter. There was no letter. There were like multiple letters before we actually got to the letter. And every draft you go and you read, you see the different changes that he's made. Um, and it's fantastic that he's kept them because you can see where he's changed. You can see his sort of thought process as well. Um, we've got draft letters for almost everything he's ever published, whether it's Inside, or whether it's Amust, or whether it's anything else. He kept a lot of draft letters. Um, hundreds of pages of drafts, which we, we have actually um, scanned. His attention to detail and perfection yeah. is highlighted there. Definitely. I think Katie can relate to that. 